Hello and welcome to Headline News in Neuroendocrine Tumors or NETS. I'm Steve Highsmith. This series of videos will focus on several important abstracts presented at the 8th Annual European Neuroendocrine Society meeting held March 9th to 11th in Lisbon, Portugal. Throughout 2011, Oncoview.tv will bring you in-depth coverage of the latest data and abstracts presented at major neuroendocrine tumor society meetings. In this segment, we're talking with Dr. Eric Baudin, who's joining us from France to discuss the effect of Everolimus and octreotide LAR on five HIAA levels. Doctor, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be with you. Can you tell our audience why it was important to do this study? The importance of studying biomarkers in neuroendocrine tumors is uh, related to the fact that those tumors are slowly progressing tumors. And it's probably one of the most difficult tumor to study regarding the rate of progression and in case of treatment, the effect of this treatment. It's much more difficult to understand the anti-tumor and to measure the anti-tumor effect of drugs in slowly progressive tumors compared to very aggressively progressive tumors. So what we are trying to understand in this study is whether the study of biomarkers, and in this case, the measurement of a biomarker called 5-HIAA, can help us in a better understanding of the effect of a drug called Everolimus in the treatment of well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. And this study refers mainly to patients with non-pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. And what we try to do is to see whether the evolution of the drug under treatment may reflect some better impact of the drug compared to the placebo uh, in this randomized study. So the importance of measuring biomarkers in neuroendocrine tumors is both to better measure the anti-tumor impact of drugs in neuroendocrine tumors, but also to have information which reflect the potential anti-secretory effect of drugs in neuroendocrine tumors. Indeed, it's well known that those tumors are both uh, harming patients by their progression, but also by secreting hormones. Other than a history of secretory symptoms, did patients with elevated HIAA at baseline differ with respect to demographics or disease characteristics? Yes, we think that patients with elevated level of hormones, such as 5-HIAA, have a different uh, presentation and disease characteristic, reflected both by a higher rate of secretions, hormone secretions, and also a higher tumor burden. In your study, Dr. Baudin, how many patients were included in the five HIAA response analysis? In the RADIAN2 studies, 88% of the patients had baseline measurements of this biomarker. And we can also say that half of the evaluable patients had elevated 5-HIAA baseline levels. Were there differences in 5-HIAA responses between the two treatment groups? The answer is yes, and this is illustrated by two different results. The first one is the number and the percentage of patients with hormone response defined by a decrease of more than 50% of the baseline level of the marker and or complete normalization of the marker. And we found that this situation, this situation was observed in 61% of the patients treated by the combination of Evolimus plus octreotide but only in 47% of the patients treated in the placebo arm 
plus octeotide. And the second way to answer positively to these questions is that we found that this decrease was maintained over time, and we found that taking into account what we call the geometric means of the fold changes from baseline of this marker, the decrease of 5-HIAA was maintained during the first four cycles of treatment in the patients treated by Everolimus plus octreotide compared to patients treated by placebo plus octreotide. So, Dr. Baudin, can you explain the scientific and clinical implications of these results? This result is another proof that the combination of Everolimus plus octreotide compared to placebo plus octreotide has some significant anti-tumor and or anti-secretory effects in patients with well differentiated endocrine tumors treated by this drug. It's not possible to discriminate between a pure anti-tumor effect and or a combination of an anti-tumor and an anti-secretory effect. And this decrease in biomarker 5-HIAA is another proof that this drug has some effects that we have to understand in the future the real portion of anti-tumor and or anti-secretory effects that explain this decrease. Are other biomarkers, for example, CGA response, being explored as biochemical markers of response? The answer is yes. We are looking for other markers and like chromogranin A, which is probably one of the most studied biomarkers in this group of patients. And I, I can say that the uh, preliminary results are very promising, showing the same kind of results using this second biomarker, which I, I think is another proof that this drug has um, an interesting impact in this group of tumor, which needs to be better understood in the future. To conclude our time today, can you comment about ENETS and what you found to be of particular interest at this meeting? Yes, what, what I would like to focus on is that the same kind of analysis uh, were performed in the Radiant 3 studies. The Radiant 3 study, studies is dealing with the impact of Everolimus compared to placebo in patients, to, in patients treated for uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. And the same kind of results were observed. And I think that this is another proof that uh, biomarker may help the understanding of the anti-tumor effect of drugs in neuroendocrine tumors. And in this case, the anti-tumor effects of Everolimus in neuroendocrine tumors. Dr. Eric Baudin, discussing the results from the Radiant 2 trial. We thank all of the experts who participated in this edition of Headline News in Nets. I'm Steve Highsmith. Be sure to watch coverage on the latest news in Nets right here on Ankeview.tv.